Twitch emote. To the bottom left hand side of the map, let's introduce some players, let's talk StarCraft. This is a very serious game for Millennium and for Euronix Gaming because both of these teams have the potential to finish first in this group. Still. But, it's not going to happen if they don't win here tonight. So this is really about, I mean both are already in the playoffs. But both would love to finish higher in the group so they get an easier match in the round of eight. So the bottom left hand side, our Blue Zerg player from Euronix Gaming is Firecake. And to the upper right, it's going to be our Red Protoss player from Millennium. Let's see it for Showtime. Very scary PvZ player. Last time we saw him out here in the SC2ITL, he was playing against um, Liquid. And he did take down Snoot very decisively on Frozen Temple before he actually uh, unfortunately fell on Core Hal College Knockout to Vortex to a very cheeky 12 pool build which relied on killing off the um, killing off the, um, the the rock tower and blocking him out from his natural expansion. Don't think he was too happy about that one as we see this probe just moving around from Showtime looking to see what's up, looking to see what's happening. Spawning pool is on the way down here after the hatchery so hatch pool into a gas now and Firecake just setting up very standard. I mean, Dust Towers for the map, again, neither player vetoing this, so both players obviously looking for maybe a longer game, a game where they can get into three bases, four bases very easily. Maybe both looking for something where they can just macro on and just kind of take it to really to a macro game in this. Again, Millennium versus Team Liquid was one fantastic series. We actually rebroadcast that just before we went live with the Team League today between the Leifen Cup and Team League. We rebroadcasted that, and if you still haven't seen it, honestly, I urge you to go check it out on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash SC2 Improve, and um, if you check it out, honestly, it's, it's, it was such a great match, great best of seven, really, really fantastic, very worth, uh, very much so worth watching. Is there a replay pack for subs? Yes, um, let me write it down, and I'll remind myself to send it to you, that'll remind me to send it to you, I'll send it to you later, I'll send you the March replay pack, to give you something to work on until we get to the end of April. Wrote it down. You will receive it in your twitching box. Probably tonight, unless I, for some reason, managed to not look at my whiteboard for the rest of the day. Stargate is on the way for Showtime as he heads in towards the third Nexus already, so not wasting any time at all here into getting set up early on in this game. So, just end up pylons getting ready to go into his third sometime soon, with a Stargate behind this as well, as Firecake is set up onto his own free bases. And a single adept from Showtime just coming across. Having a look to see what's up and what's going on as that shade will come up in towards the main base. Just have a little bit of a look around. We'll actually start to work his way through. Drone actually will get one drone kill and maybe a second one here. Uh, Firecake just gets the engine extractor in time. They were literally had the um, blinding flash of a kind of a depth shot going towards it as it became an extractor. Probably the last thing it saw because, before becoming an inanimate building. As we see the adept does make it out of there. Took speed damage, only one drone kill. We can speed about finish up for Firecake. The showtime is beginning that Phoenix production, so going to be getting some Phoenix out here shortly. Going to be working his way through these overlords out on the map and looking to begin that early game Stargate harassment. There's that Eva chamber just about halfway done currently from 5k. We're going to see the Zergling speed completing and just going to set up into this that, uh, yeah, that uh, Phoenix just working his way through the overlord here as the probes just getting Chrono boosted out of the natural expansion and we're going to see plus one melee. Coming in from Firekick as well. So plus one melee on the way in. You can see Overlord getting taken down. And Phoenix just going to move out onto the map here. To get a look to see what is going on. I'd love to see what is happening here in the early stages. Forge on the way as well. From Showtime. I'm going to see the uh, melee upgrade. And there's more Zerglings on the way out for Firekick too. So very much so. Very similar to what we've been seeing a lot of the day here in ZVPs. We casted so many ZVPs today. We casted a whole bunch in the Leifeng Cup. We casted a whole bunch in that last series. But we've been seeing this plus one melee upgrade come in a lot. This uh, switching the meta into this plus one melee and kind of baneling base attack styles has become very, very popular here very, very uh, recently and very swiftly. So very interesting to see another Phoenix joining up with these couple just overhead right now. As we see these things just going to be moving around. I'm going to see these Zerglings thinking of coming in towards that third base here in the next couple of moments. But 
Well, he wants to make sure he's got a few more. And I mean, this front overcharges as a sentry too, so he should be pretty safe, honestly. As Fire Kick is actually just going to be taking a fourth base back at home as well. And more than anything, with these Zerglings, not so much looking to attack, but just looking to keep the map control and keep the pressure going. As you're going to see, the Phoenix just working their way through these. Um, Drones in the mineral lines, so just getting through a few of these. Actually, quite a few drones going down there before them Phoenix get pushed away. And we're going to see, see the Phoenix push back, pulling back right now. When will the 20 minute TVZ from yesterday be on YouTube? That is one of those matches which is not going to be on YouTube. I can assure you that. It's one of those matches which I hope to never actually have to see again. It was possibly the worst game of StarCraft I've ever casted. So I think I've honestly casted bronze, silver, gold games which were a lot more entertaining, a lot more exciting. So, um,. <laughs> so yeah, that's um, that's uh, that goes. That's pretty much all I've got to say about that. Honestly, that was horrendous. I just can't even believe it happened. You know, seriously, really, really crazy. Gonna see these uh, Phoenix coming in and picking up a few more drones. Just continue to harass you in the early stages. Resources lost is pretty standard for kind of a Phoenix-based opening. Kind of high for the Zerg and pretty much next to zero for the Protoss player. Um, of course, I mean, it's, in a way, it's it's not too high. It's only kind of 600 resources difference or 700. But at the same time, it's only one Stargate and five Phoenix. So you're not looking for kind of a 1k plus difference from kind of a double Stargate commitment, which is definitely what you would be looking for in a double Stargate commitment uh, oftentimes. Temple Archives comes down to the main base of Showtime here. A few extra gateways are finishing up as well. So a few extra gateways coming into play. That Temple Archives is going to be very important here as well very soon. Coming to boost onto the Forge. We've got an Immortal on the way up as well. So Immortal on the way up, we've got a Forge being Corona boosted, we've got a Hive on the way, we've got a Spire on the way, plus two Melee is halfway done and Groove Spines is about to be finished as well. As we're going to see single Zergman over to the right, we've got Hatchery being saturated to the left, and a Warp Prism just to the top left as well, getting ready to warp in and harass base potentially in the near future. Storm's coming in from uh, Showtime, something we're seeing more and more of as well, very fast tech into Storm. Um, it's very good against kind of uh, Ling Bane with Hydra based setups. Which is not really what this is though from um, Fire Kick. He's going into some Hydras, yes. But he's dropping down the Lurker Den, something which Showtime is really trying hard to see. He's also seen that Spire, so he sees the Lurker Den, sees the Spire, and he sees the Hive morphing too. So actually, I mean, he basically sees everything. Showtime knows exactly what his opponent is up to and immediately is starting to go into the Fleet Beacon, the second Stargate and these guys are really just playing like No Rush 20 only expedited until, you know, expedited to like No Rush 10 because they are both going to hit their late game before the 10 minute mark here more or less. I mean we're both we're talking about kind of four bases, 90 drones for Fire Cake, 70 probe, four base for Showtime with Tempest on the way out, with Lurker Brood on the way out, like it, this is really Really, 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 really kind of super greed from both players. Both of them just being very respectful and just macroing and macroing and macroing. And obviously, in a way, I mean, pros players, a lot of people have been saying that pros players are having a really good time late game in PvZ. And that's something which is going to be very interesting to kind of see in this, you know, in this scenario. Is Firekick's rush to late game tech going to be soon enough? In a way, I sort of feel as though he's been figured out to some extent, and by being figured out, he's maybe allowed Showtime to begin preparing and begin hitting his own late game, which then may be problematic to deal with, but we shall see. So we have the um, Zealots just popping out of the Warpism over to the left-hand side, just moving forwards a little bit. Them drones going to have to pull away until something comes in. There we go, the Hydras and the Glings coming in. Them Zealots will get cleaned up, so the Zealots going to go down and... Still some Phoenix out on the map, just are here and are there. I mean, Phoenix is not going to be too useful at this point, but can still kind of buffer a little bit of damage, and if there's any Vipers added into this composition from Fire Kick at any point, then maybe we could see something like uh, the Phoenix chasing down a Viper or so. But other than that, they're not going to have too much use unless they continue to harass and maybe pick off another drone or two here or there. But apart from that, that's pretty much all these Phoenix can do right now. They are continuing to kind of just scout around and try and push these Overlords away. We'll get one of them, Nelly. Not quite, though. Actually loses a Phoenix. And then overlords, as they move away, do reveal <laughs> the trio of tech structures underneath them, which they've been hiding up until now. The Great Aspire, the Lurker Den, and the Infestation Pit. And you see a lot of Zerglings coming in towards the center of the map. And the Hydras are just coming in towards the center as well right now, too. Corruptors, too. Everything coming in, and actually there's already a bunch of Broodlords more from Firecake. So again, Tempest already out on the map. 
I really feel as the Fire Cake needs a few more Corruptors here, potentially, to maybe really fight against this. I mean, he's going to have to go up against like four Tempests, five Tempests out now, and a six about a pop. It's going to be very, very difficult. Creep is pushing very nicely for him up the middle. But again, he has to try and find a way to take a fight. Broodlords are going to start working their way forwards. The storms available on these high temple are going to be devastating as well. Nice revelation will give Showtime that extra range on the Tempest to work with. And we see one of these high temples actually getting sniped down by Hydro too. We're going to see Lynx trying to run in towards the fourth base at the same time. Both of these players playing very carefully, very cautiously here in the early stages of game number one of this best of seven. Lynx is going to surround over to the right hand side. A lot of them Zealots are going to end up falling. So them Zealots do go down and well, we see Broods just over the left a little bit. Ling, Bane, Hydra here in the center too. Everything just setting up, ready to go. We see an Ultra Cavern coming down. Honestly, I can almost never agree with Ultras in ZVP because when there's Immortals on the map and Tempest, what are the Ultras really going to do? I don't think they're going to do anything useful here at all. Um, it's kind of a weird situation because I don't know what really beats this sort of army that's coming in from Showtime, you know? Like, I mean, you look at this and what do you do? You've got to kind of maybe out corruptor his Tempest and then you've got to kill the Tempest and then kind of rely on your Brutalords to get real damage done to the ground. It's a very tough situation to figure out. Maybe some Vipers, maybe start pulling them Tempests in and picking them off one at a time. Just work away slowly, maybe set up a Spore Crawler line and just set up a very kind of turtly game. Which is definitely a possibility, of course, on Dusk Towers to see a very turtly game. Showtime, though, is actually moving out. He's maxed out, so, I mean, what's he got to wait for? A few Voids on the way up? Well, they can catch up. Plus three. That's going to finish up soon. He's got nothing to wait for, so by moving out, he's going to protect his fifth base and he's going to allow himself to run by over to the top side a little bit. Sometimes that's going to be shut down very quickly though as Fire Cake on his own five bases and both players actually taking the same kind of uh, base expansion pattern. Fourth base off to the side and then the fifth base what is the kind of more natural base but again a bit difficult, more difficult to hold because of that high ground ledge. Now they're late game both players have tools enough to kind of deal with that high ground ledge and should have the map control enough to stop anything getting into position there. So taking that base as your fifth is very viable as we see also now a sixth base coming in from Fire Cake to the very far top left hand side. And we really are going into quite the epic right now in game number one of Euronix and Millennium as Fire Kick and Showtime clashing horns in the macro department. What's up, Zerglings? Running over to the right here. Going to be looking to see what they can get up to. So a whole bunch of Zerglings running over to the right. They're going to be coming up in towards this fifth base as well in a couple of moments, perhaps. And let's see what they can do. Here we go. Zerglings on the way in. And all clan cannons for an overcharge as well. Means that all them Zerglings literally kill four probes, and that's about it. Come more cannons over here, and them Zerglings not going to find much more damage. They're going to go into the third, but actually the third is kind of unprotected. If he went here to begin with, maybe he would have um, gotten something done. We're going to see these uh, Kryptonians being killed off, and well, Brutalos being taken down immediately here. Storm coming in. Let's here we go. Balin is rolling for us. No Balin speed. These Corruptors taking so much damage from these storms before this fight even begins, and oh my god. This is just kind of destruction, right? I mean, look at this. Everything's just going down in the skies. So many Corruptors just falling. And the Tempest look as though they've barely even been touched, you know? These Brood Lords are going to go down next. There's a lot of Ultras on the way as a Remax. And I just wonder, I just don't know if that's going to be enough, right? Ultras against this army still on the ground and in the sky for Showtime. I'm not sure how this goes. 15 minutes in, it really looks as though it still feels that like this should be like a 30-40 minute game with the way things are looking in the armies and so on. A whole bunch of Ultras, is it really going to be enough? What does he do to kill off the Tempests? He still doesn't have any real anti-air apart from a couple of, um, a few Queens, you know? Like, it's a very weird situation. Ultras going to be pushing this army back a little bit. Two of these Ultras being transfused, being kept alive for a little while, but man, to them, the Immortals just pack a punch when it comes to armored units. So you're going to see the Ultras just pulling back, and a couple more High Temples being warped in, so Storm's available once again, a few more Archons mixed into this as well. I still don't understand where exactly... Fire Cake goes to kind of deal with these Tempests at all, as we see these Ultras starting to move on in. Off of Creep, as we see him, well, Showtime just kiting as best he can. Obviously, the more he kites, the better it is for him. He's going to take down the Ultras to the top side of this army, and well, actually, now he's just going to stand still and fight. He's actually got a recall away. He will recall back home as Fire Cake in a little bit of a tough position right now. 133 supply to 175. And we're going to see Fire Cake just moving forward. They'll take off that Warp Prism, which is nice. Actually catches a couple of more out on their own. Still don't see the way in which he deals with all of these Tempests. And that is got to be something on his mind, surely. How does he deal with these? I don't know. It's not like Ultras can just suddenly look upwards and start kind of uh, eating up the Tempests from the ground. It's going to be tough. 
It's going to be very tough. Um, one thing I'd like to kind of say is that Euronix have been almost untouchable this season. Like, they have so many all kills. They have been... They're on, like, what? Plus 21 map score, I think. Over seven matches. That means that... I mean, the best map score you could have is a kind of 28-0, right? Plus 28. They have plus 21. I mean, outside of losing to Liquid, they've lost, like... You know, they've lost very, very few games. It's uh, really crazy how powerful Euronix Gaming have been. But a team like Millennium... I've also been very powerful, apart from that slip-up against DC Visualize, they took down Team Liquid even, and again, I actually feel this season is going to really come down to whichever of these uh, teams from Group A actually meet once again in the finals, because Group A just became this kind of real sort of powerhouse of kind of crazy powerful teams, and it, I mean, it's very difficult to see one of these teams not actually being the victors, I mean, when you've got Euronix and Liquid and Millennium to bet on, very tough to see someone from Group B winning this season. Just because of how dominant these teams have been, and this is kind of just put in respect of how crazy a match this is. As we see, I mean, this game's kind of over. This army from Fire Kick's not going to do anything. Um, GG. It just kind of puts into perspective how great a match this is. A match where both of these teams are really. That's all I'm going to say. Let's just go in. Let's just introduce some players. The bottom right hand side from Euronics Gaming. It's our Red Zerg player. Let's hear it. You're cheering on Nurcio. To the other left, our uh, blue Protoss player from Millennium. He's put them one game up. Can he keep this going? It is showtime. <laughs> Very excited, interested to see. What is going to be going on here? At the start of game number two, showtime and nurture two of the strongest players in the European region. Finishing first and second in the WCS Challenger League this season. And we'll be seeing how this goes over the next few minutes. These guys did play. Um, did they play? I can't remember, actually. I think they did play, right? They played in like the round of four of the winner's bracket of WCS Challenger. And it was... Uh, yeah, I believe that is the way it was. Um, I believe that's how they did after playing each other. Let me try and get um, that up here for me to just check. Always good to know that I'm talking about stuff properly. Ah, man, this is such a... God damn it. Okay. <laughs> um, I'll try to get onto the Liquipedia homepage on my phone. It's not easy. For some reason, it's really not easy. Alright, try again. Um, tournaments, there we go, that's easier. Um, Spring Regional Challenges. Yeah, I believe these guys played in the, um, in the winner's bracket. Uh, Nurture went on to play Mana in the final, and then he, um, and the Showtime dropped to the loser's bracket where he kind of made a good solid run through, yeah. Nurture dropped Showtime three games to one, he uh, did win on Prior and Terraces, Showtime winning on Frozen Temple. Showtime then had a pretty convincing performance in the loser's bracket, 3-0 Fortex. Again, his um, ZVP PVZ has always been a very strong matchup of his, as we see the Stargate is on the way up here, going to finish very shortly, as Gateway is just going to be uncoronoed and actually going to put the Corona back onto the Nexus. Just coronoing out probes as we see third hatch coming down from Nurcio, Zergling speed about to finish up, and well, not too much else going on just yet, as these couple of Zerglings are going to pull back into the natural. So not really too much going on straight away. As I can see, the Zerglings are going to be coming up towards the upper left-hand side of the map. And we just wait to see kind of what the build's going to be. Watch these Phoenix come out. It looks like there's going to be very kind of standard stuff all together here from Showtime. With these Phoenix on the way out, picking off Overlords, Zergling is moving around the map as well. So I'm going to see what they can get up to early on. It's going to be a Rotorum and an Evo Chamber from Nurture setting up here onto these free gold bases. We'll see if he's going to go for an aggressive timing or see if he's just got kind of a longer game in plan. I mean, again, on this map, kind of Ling, Ravager, Queen sort of attacks have been very, very popular as of late. And he is still building up a few more Queens, going up to six already. So it definitely looks as though that could be a possibility here. Probe getting ready to take the third base for Showtime in the near future as well. What's up, Lizzie? How you doing? Hope life's treating you good. 
And as we have the Queen's just coming down, creep continuing to spread out. Of course, the better the creep is, the easier time these units have moving across to the other side. As we do see a lair on the way up from Nurture, so he's not going to go lairless in this game. So probably is just going to go into road speed and maybe even a plus one missile attacks and maybe just attack. If he is going to attack, then it will be a bit later in the game rather than in the immediate future. And some drones just continue to saturate here on the two gold bases to the right hand side. A couple more extractors coming up, and we'll see. The queens are pushing across, man. Like these queens are on a mission to get across this map and to do something here sometime soon. But Showtime, well, he's not got a third base just yet. So he actually decided not to go for it. He's actually thinking this is going to be an aggressive push, push. And so he sat on two bases, walling in once again, and just kind of looking to defend. Well, well, the queens are actually kind of pulling back towards the creep spread. So he's not pushing across here anytime soon. And Maybe Showtime could have gotten away with taking the third Nexus here at some point. We see these Zerglings coming in over to the left hand side. A few drones have gone down to see Phoenix having a bit of a party in the uh, gold base. So Phoenix is doing a little bit of damage here. We're going to see the uh, Queens coming in. Just looking to push those Phoenix away. So Phoenix being pushed back over to the left. You can see these Zerglings are coming through the middle as well. We're just going to see the Phoenix and the Lings in general just sort of joining up together. Nexus and the Pylon coming down from Showtime. Third base being set up, then eventually we we'll see a Hydro Den coming down from Nurture as well. So actually, Nurture into the water, the uh, Lurker Den, uh, potentially here very soon, unless he just wants to play Roach Hydra. Let's see what's going to be. It's going to be a skill augments. Yes, it is. So he's going to play kind of, um, maybe not Roach Hydra, but it's more like Hydra Ling, I guess. Um, we actually very rarely see Roach Hydra. If you want to play Roach Hydra, you may as well kind of play the Roach Ravager in a lot of way. As we're going to see the Zerglings just pulling back down towards the bottom right. A few Queens over on this uh, gold base as well. Phoenix just again joining up together, moving down south. Fourth base being set up by Nurture. Very, for the most part, passive game for the most part. Just that delayed third from um, Showtime, which has been somewhat interesting so far. As that Musk Goldman's finishes, I do wonder if that is when Nurture will begin to get aggressive here in this game. Or if he's got kind of another plan, whether he just does want to go straight into the Lurker Den and more. Uh, Showtime turns around, doesn't lose a Phoenix just yet. One of them gets very low, but doesn't go down, which is important. I mean, the more Phoenix you keep alive, the more damage you can get done. The faster you pick off, you know, the more lifts you have as well, obviously. As the Hadd is just poking into the left, pulling away once again. Keeping an eye on where the Phoenix might be going and just continuing to move around themselves. So just both players continue to move their army around, continue to look to harass, get damage done where possible. Or deny damage where possible from Nurture's scenario. And as you see, the Phoenix coming in towards the main. The Hydra's already here for the most part. He turns instantly, and he is actually maybe going to get one of these Phoenix actually because they're kind of trapped in a bit of an awkward spot. Three of them going down, and, and it's just kind of a good positioning from Nurture. Having his Hydra's up here, the Phoenix commit down here. The Hydra's can cut off the escape path of them, Phoenix, and catches a few of them on the way out. So that's a really nice lure in that Phoenix counters. The script spread up through the center, still looking very good. Double immortal production. Is underway. A couple more mortals are about to pop out here very soon. As we have a bunch of adept zealots, a couple of sentries, and again, other than that, mostly just immortals. A very um, plainly coloured army for our pros player. Lots of just kind of uh, beige sort of units and blending in with the map in a way as we see these hydras pushing forward. So, obviously, Nurture looking to see if he can get something done. Look, it ends halfway done now. So, looking to just see if he can push and do something with these hydras, but probably unlikely he'll get too much achieved here. As Showtime will continue to reposition his army as Nurture moves around and looks to see if he can find a way into attack. But he isn't, and he's just going to end up pulling down towards, or back towards the center. Now, maybe if the Lurker then coming up, maybe if the first few Yulet Lurkers, Nurture will find a way to engage here. But Nurture's, as Showtime, sorry, is actually set up very nicely in terms of, you know, ready to, you know, he's ready to deal with whatever might come in. He's got. Immortals, he's got Zealots with Charge, he's got upgrades continue to roll on, and he's got a couple of Archons too. It's a very good kind of anti-lurker force. As we see it down to the right hand side, these Phoenix are going to be running on in towards this third base mineral line. The skull base over here going to be seeing a bunch of these drones going down, so a couple of extractors going to be um, emptied there. Five workers killed, and Showtime just adding on a little bit of damage before he has to bring these Phoenix back to potentially defend once again. Even if these Phoenix just lift up a few of the lurkers, take them out of the equation, that would be something which, um, you know, is still going to help a little bit, even if you just stop them from burrowing for a moment or two, you know? Every little does help as we're going to see, whoa, well this is a good fight immediately for Nurture because he catches a couple of mortals on move command, as these, uh, well, Hydra's going to start doing some damage, there come the Phoenix, starting to lift up some of the Hydra's from the equation, 
And, well, Nurture looks as though he's got this, though. I think he's in a pretty good position. He pulls back a little bit and reburrows them lurkers, which got lifted. Queen's coming in for transfusers, and I'm not sure time just going to sit over to the left-hand side. The lurkers going to reburrow, and ah, I just feel as though there's not really enough to tank right now. These lurkers very, very powerful as these pylons are going down to the left side. This third base under heavy attack here, and Showtime in a very big risk of losing this third expansion right now. He's going to re-engage. A couple of queens being lifted, so they cannot transfuse. But these lurkers just put out so much damage. These mortals in the back are going down. Probes are pulled in. It looks as though Nurture is going to be tying up our series one game apiece here in this best of seven. GG and Nurture ties things up. One game. Green on. Get ready to introduce these guys straight away, shall we? Yeah, why not? All right, so. To the bottom right-hand side of the map, it's going to be our... Oops. To the bottom right-hand side of the map, it's going to be our red Terran player from Millennium. Let's hear it if you're cheering on Millennium's Daishi. To the top left, our blue Zerg player from Euronics Gaming, opening up with a very early gas and what will be a very early pool. Going to do something a little bit cheesy, a little bit aggressive here. It is Euronix Gaming's Nurture. So, the natural expansion has been changed. The uh, ramp has been kind of... It's, it's just been changed a little bit. I think in general what it is, is this has been kind of pushed out a bit further. And this has been kind of... The ramp has been pulled away from the side. And it's been pulled down a little bit. So, kind of usually you see this going... I'm pretty sure it's pretty straight. Um, but it's been kind of... Uh, Extended a little bit here. The ram has been pulled down slightly, and this kind of natural has been kind of pushed back a little bit. I'm not sure if it's been pushed back at all. If the ram's just moved. It means it's much easier to wall off now. Very easy to wall off, actually. Um, but still a bit cramped, actually, with a nexus here. It's kind of weird because where do you actually wall off? Because if you wall off along there, where do you actually have any space to put your army? Um, it's a very, very cramped natural. So that's kind of interesting. See how this plays out. I mean, we might not get to see that really come into play as we see Zergling speed starting from Nurture. Just a fast link speed from him. Is the Reaper going to be on the way out here shortly? We'll be moving across the map to see if he can see you get any damage done. But the main problem from Daishi is that it's going to be very difficult for him to hold on to his... Um, to hold on to his uh, CC here. CC on the way down in the natural expansion. Reaper is going to be moving up towards the upper left. And looking to see what's going on, but there's some signals coming in, and this is where Daishi is going to have to immediately start pulling this Reaper back as he has a Marine out. And does he start a second Marine? Well, probably. He really wants to just try and keep this uh, CC alive. He's going to pull in a couple of SUVs down. And then you can, with the Marine and the Reaper and two SCVs, he should be able to actually fight against this rather easily. Um, lose the Marine, but will be able to keep the CC. However, Link Speed's going to finish shortly, and that's going to be really problematic here for Daishi. Um, Link Speed's going to finish him. He's going to see Link Speed finishing? Maybe? No, he doesn't. Before you might see it on that lane, this Reaper... Oh, this is tough. They're just basically going to force a cancel, though, on this... Um, on this um, expansion, right? His Ling is coming across, going to come in, surround this base. And I see this uh, SCV just going to be taken down, and the Reaper just going to be dropping a grenade. I'm just going to be hopping on up in towards the main base here, so Reaper hops up in towards the main, and the Ling just continue to surround, and Reaper actually goes down, cancelling the CC. Daishi will just rebuild this immediately on the high ground. Going into tank, we'll probably add on a medevac a starport here shortly too. And a couple of marines popping out to deal with all of these zerglings. Start an ideal stop, but of course, at the same time, Nurture committed into a lot of lings and less drones and a slower hatchery to be able to get this set up and ready to go. So, just um, setting up. And we see that natural on the way. So, bit of a bit of a weird opening then, and Nurture will take what is definitely a bit of an advantage from this. Definitely not game over. Yes, it's very painful for Daishi, but again, Nurture's build is delayed as well. And, you know, the, the thing is, Daishi kind of immediately rebuilt that CC. As soon as he cancelled it, he immediately rebuilt it. So, he rebuilt that, and it's just going to be continuing to come up here. And he'll be able to float it down here very soon. He's got a tank to help protect the natural now, and actually that one marine is going to allow those lingers to be shelled upon once there. Now, there's a couple of marines just coming down the ramp, factory, and starport. Setting up here, Medivac is going to be popping out shortly. And as the CC is about to finish, 
Let's see, an orbital morph in, or maybe he just sends it down to the natural straight away, yeah. This is something you oftentimes do when you're kind of oversaturated on a base, you want to kind of um, get saturation going just ASAP instead of kind of the orbital. So um, he's got four SCVs, so it kind of makes sense to send the CC down straight away, then morph in the orbital. Um, just get them SCVs mining the ASAP. As we do see a tank coming across, Dash is going to look to get a little bit of damage done with this here in the early stages. Going to load that tank, and whoops, there we go, just going to be able to pick off that Zergling. And we'll come over to the left hand side and we'll be looking to pick off a Zergling here as well momentarily. But the Zergling runs away from the watchtower, so. Nature are playing this well so far. Rotron is on the way up about halfway done, and the lair is just starting now, as we'll see this um, Queen just looking to push this medevac away, and we do just see the Queen's actually going to be able to kind of start working the way against this tank. When he gets boost, he should be able to boost in, grab the tank, get away, but it means he can't really harass too much further apart from dropping in on the other side of these rocks, just has to be very careful now. I mean, another situation like that, and that's going to be one very dead medevac, so he does have to be a bit cautious. Just kill Creep Tumor, which is nice. Another medevac and some marines coming across here, so he's going to keep on pushing, keep on being aggressive. And to be fair, Nurture right now doesn't have very many units, just a whole bunch of Zerglings, and, well, that's about it. These medevacs, though, need to kind of stick with those uh, marines. The marines do need a little bit of healing, of course. He has the tank firing here, and he needs to uh, now try and make sure he gets those tanks firing onto the queens instead. Queen's taking a lot of damage, and well, Deshi is doing a little bit of something with this push. That uh, medevac though is very low, and Queen's are targeting, and it will go down. And so two tanks here, but only one can be saved. Although maybe not. Maybe he can get one tank to this side, come back, and get the other very quickly. Might be the way he can do this and uh, keep both alive. Queen's coming in once again. He's going to lose one tank. He will lift and leave with the other. So a couple of Marines over there, and Deshi. I mean, he loses a little bit, but he actually, in the same time, he loses a little bit, but still gets some. Good damage done, but oh no, he loses that siege tank. That's a big loss for him. Drops his uh, tank off here once again. Now losing two tanks. I can, you know, losing one tank is okay, but losing two, well, that's getting a little bit crazy. Now, as we're going to see these things coming across, and well, Dacia can't really wall off on the natural because there's uh, unbuildable plagues or unbuildable rocks blocking his wall off. And we're going to see these SCVs fighting against these Zerglings. Tank will come in and fire against those couple of Zerglings in the mineral line. And four SCVs have been killed. As you see, one more Marine is actually just saved over there. Overall, you know, all said and done, Deshi has a third CC up. He's 45 SCVs to 57 drones, which is not too bad a position. His army count is fairly similar. Upgrades are fairly even. It's turning out to be a very even game, despite all the kind of circumstances and all everything that's been kind of said and done. I was going to see the yeah, medevacs heading up towards this top side. One of these, uh... Meatless, uh, one of these meatless, one of these medevacs are a little bit low. Does have to be a little bit cautious with that. Obviously doesn't want to uh, lose one another one of those after everything he's already sort of lost here. But, um, well, in a way, Nurture is kind of, um, kind of in the right sort of position here. Now, again, I feel as though he could maybe pull back. He's got Bruce, he might be able to save both, just not quite. Very nice idea, though, again, dropping behind the rocks is why I initially thought last time. He, um... Could have dropped them both off behind the rocks. So dropped one off, gone back, got the other, and then kind of saved both, perhaps. Not easy to do, and of course it depends on the timing, as we see Deshi. Just continuing up with tank production, and Nurture is going into a bunch more roaches. Third base is going to be taken here, and Deshi just continues to set up. So Nurture, a little bit of a supply block, lots of ravages coming across the map. With three tanks set up, though. Hmm, three tanks set up. Uh, Freight isn't spread on Marines. Stim isn't finished yet, but one one will be, so... Uh, it's this is one of these fights where I think Daishi should just about be able to hold on. And especially if he can kind of control these tanks backwards, maybe lift this one up and put it up on this high ground. It would be a very nice place to have it, actually, as Marines will pull back. And there we go, that tank going to come up to the high ground. A few medevacs coming in. Let's see if these tanks are going to be enough. The Marines are actually falling very quickly here. No stim really being a little bit of a pain as oof, just saving that one tank on the high ground there from those uh, crows of bars which came in. Nurture attacking four is getting some more damage done. A tank over to this far right hand side, going to be coming in and trying to help out as well. Some SCVs going down though, and this isn't looking too promising for Deshi. And one of them situations where, well, maybe I was a little bit wrong. I kind of thought Deshi had enough to hold on, and uh, maybe he did, but maybe it was just a little bit, you know, spread a bit too thinly. Maybe he wasn't quite positioned well enough initially. Looks as though Nurture has been able to do a lot of damage here. 18 workers killed, and of course, from that, he just techs on up and takes himself kind of a lot of momentum in this game if he denies the third base. It's going to be a long time before Deshi really gets an army to attack, and so Nurture can even afford to just go double infestation pit. <laughs> when one infestation pit is just not enough, when you need that fungal growth and that neural parasite at the same time. 
As we're going to see the uh, plus two carp is about to finish up, plus two missiles has just started here. Roaches, Ravagers moving forwards. Tanks just firing onto these as we see the third base. Going to be taking some heavy damage and well, Dish has to lift that obviously. Stim now finished so that helps him a little bit but still not a great position. He's fallen behind in upgrades, his combat shield's not done. He's going to find himself a few overlords which is a, well, a small victory to say the least because... Well, what's free overlords right now? It doesn't even supply block Nurture. And it just delayed his opponent's third base, you know, Dish is in a very tough spot to kind of fight back from at this point. And as you see, the Corrosive Bow's coming down, and that actually is going to be a dead third command center. And well, this was hard to fight back from before, now it's even harder. As you see, the Roaches, the Ravagers are going to be looking to try and fight against this, realizing that maybe they can't, and it's just going to be saved to just wait for the Pathogen Glands. I mean, he's got nothing to really overcommit for, you know, he's got everything to gain by waiting. But nothing to gain by being too aggressive already, so... It's Daishi who basically has to go for kind of more or less one all-in push. I mean, he's going to move his main base to his third instead, but... Still, I mean, it's only two orbitals, only two mules. It's a very tough position to play from, as we see... Daishi going to lift and going to go ahead over to the right-hand side here. As the Marine just going to work his way through this Overseer. You're going to see the Chinchin just dropping on the Watchtower. As Marines... And then Marauder just moving forwards up this right hand side. And a big stim forwards here as these tanks need to unload. He needs to stop deck. There's Nerdio already in position. Nice position on them tanks there, using the kind of uh, terrain to kind of drop the tanks to the location where the roaches and Marauders can't necessarily push into very easily. So that's really nice. As we see, we can see it going down, but here we go. Nerdio starts moving forwards, and oh, the Fungal Grove catches all of those medevacs. Three medevacs, three tanks inside of them. And actually, Nerdio coming from the south side as well, surrounds this army. And where does Daishi go? Well, he gets away with the medevac, sure, but these marines, this marauder, they are not going to get away. And it looks as though Nurture 100 supply up in this game is going to put Uranus Game into the lead for the first time today. The Roaches Ravage just collapsed in from a couple different angles. Fungal Grove just missing another Fungal Grove lands. And Corrosive Bowels will finish off a couple of those medevacs, or just one actually misplaced slightly, but still doesn't really matter at this point. This game is over, and Daishi going to have to tap out. And Nurture will put Uranus Game into the lead here. In this best of seven, all kill series. Marine's gonna work away from the high ground. You're gonna see the third base or the main base orbital under fire here. Some more SCVs falling. And okay, Nurture backs away for a couple more moments from these tanks, but still, the damage he has done is just, you know, undeniable, right? I mean, you just can't really come back from this sort of damage as a Terran player. And as you see, the Zerg going into Ultra Cavern now, and I mean, if the Road Traveler doesn't finish him, then the Ultra Cavern will, because the Terran player does not have an economy to build Liberators, he does not have an economy to build up ghosts. He doesn't have what he needs to head into his own late game. And that's why he's going to start running his problems here. As you see a couple of siege tanks just moving forwards from Daishi. And a few marines just pulling over to the left hand side. Roaches, Ravages, and Festus. And we'll just pull him back right now. And to be fair, I mean, why attack when your Ultra Cavern is so close to finishing, right? I mean, why take an engagement when in the very near future you're going to have an even better army? It just doesn't make sense. So it makes a lot of sense for Nurture to just back away for a few more moments. He knows it's not going to give the Terran... He knows with the Terran's economy, he doesn't have a time to set up a late-game army. So he knows the Ultras are going to be the killing blow. And he knows that just waiting is the safest thing to do. Because, I mean, maybe somehow, some way, if he keeps attacking, he throws away a, too few, a few too many years to tanks. And then all of a sudden, we see just a stem forwards and everything just gets destroyed. You never know. So you just got to be a little bit careful. As these Roaches, Ravagers, and these Infestors just going to be... Sticking around in towards the center of the map. Medivac going to come in. Drop in the fourth base. And a few of these drones just going to start dropping down. So, I mean, a little bit of damage being done by Daishi. It's one of the ways in which he can definitely pull himself back into this game with drops. But getting caught by the form of growth and the foul combo. And losing the drop is, of course, far from ideal. I mean, ideally, you need that drop to stick around. Hit the main base now. Load up again. Hit the third base. Really try and pull Nurture apart with these, but... Just not going to happen when he loses that first drop. He doesn't actually have another drop on the map. And to be fair, I can't really blame him for not having another drop on the map because he doesn't really have that many use to send out onto the map. Good defensive set from Daishi, but it's just not going to be enough as these Ultras run on through. The Corrosive Bars drop down, and the Ultras will just cleave through everything here. Then tanks on the high ground, not really going to matter anymore. Even fighting before Kitan is playing um, by a few seconds, which is uh, going to be kind of, well, kind of, <laughs> in a way, kind of entertaining. As we'll see, just uh, Liberator Siege and up, actually starting to get a good amount of damage done. See these uh, Ravagers looking to hit more Corrosive Biles on whatever they can. Corrosive Biles should be landing on those Liberators sometime soon. Nurture just continue to fight, continue to clean up, and again very soon should just be kind of uh, forced the GG out of Daishi, just sort of waiting for that to really finish up here. 
And the Liberator does siege, and Infesto goes down. Liberator's just trying to help push that back, but as they come into the middle of the map, I mean, Ravager should be able to cross about them, surely, right? And, yeah, there we do. Cross about them both. GG Otta, well played, says Dacia. Taps on out of the game, and Nerdjur goes 2 1 up in the. Let's go in, let's introduce some players to the top left hand side. It is our Blue Zerg from Millennium. It's Yogo. As to the other right, it's our red Zerg player. It's going to be your next game in Snurcio. OMG. Already knew. Oh, you didn't realize it was a new map. Did you not realize it was a new map when you were cast in the last game? <laughs> Kohal now has these um, normal ramps, no rocks or anything, which is a big difference. And maybe that changed the way in which Yoga was um, deciding to play this out. <laughs> Just kind of calling him out a little bit for that, perhaps. Just calling him out a little bit. We have seen Yoga once before this season of the IC2 ITL when uh, Millennium played against uh, EC Visualize. They did end up losing the match after. I think it was the same combo. I think it was Showtime. I think it was actually Lilbo, then Deishi. I think it was Lilbo, Deishi, Yoga, and uh, Madalisk who got sent out as we set up into this. So, you're going to see Hatchery first from both players, Gas Pool follow-ups, as we set up into the ZVZ here on Korhal College Knockout, again a map which we have come to hate, but maybe it's a little bit better nowadays without them Rock Towers, although to be fair, while I always kind of talked about the Rock Towers being able to be used in interesting ways to kind of block people from the main to the natural and stuff, I never really saw it being used that much in the games that I casted on this map, so that's um, a somewhat interesting kind of... Um, Way to look at things, I suppose, right? So, um... Yeah, I, I guess, I mean, maybe it won't make that much of a difference. I mean, obviously people wanted the change, and it once or twice maybe it had a big impact on the game, but I don't think it's going to make people suddenly start playing this map, you know? I don't think it's going to be, um... Very popular kind of map still, compared to the other maps which are often usable instead of Kohal Connage knockout. Ling is on the way for both players. Bailin Nest drops down from Yogo, so he's gonna be going on into his Bailin Nest and um Zergling Speed is on the way up for both players right now as well, so Ling Speed on the way up for both and just setting up, ready to go into this. The uh, drone's gonna come down into the natural expansion. You're gonna see them Zerglings coming out and just slowly working their way through these uh, this cooling tower. Just slowly working their way through anything and everything over here. And as we have a few more seconds coming across from Yoga and just looking to see what he can get up to. Some things coming across and we're going to see Nurture just trying to shut down the tower so that he can just kind of be safe here throughout as his links from Yoga are going to look to see what he can do. He's got a Bane Nest on the way. He's obviously going to try and just commit to Ling Bane pressure. Uh, so Bane Nest about to finish. But the thing is, then Bane come in before them rocks go down. Well, he's got enough links to keep on pushing this back, right? Nurture now going to drop his own Bane Nest too. Very late, but realizing he might need it here in this scenario. As he will continue to look to defend as Yogo going to be coming in here. Six workers down, so really has to get something done with this. He needs a Bailing connection here sometime soon. Here we go. Bailing's going to start coming in. Bailing, uh, uh, Link Speed finishes up for both players. Queen's targeting down those Ling uh, Banes. Both, to be fair, I mean, Yogo's sort of making something happen. He's killed off two Queens. He's continuing to kill off Zerglings here. And, well, he's going to maybe get another couple of Lings. He's going to have drones being pulled off the line by Nurcio. And Nurcio maybe just being a little bit too greedy. Zergling's killing on him here. We're going to see drones coming in once more to try and connect and just clean up what they can, moving away from the Queens. And Yogo is actually sort of making this happen. Ah, the Queen's very low. It looks as though maybe at the very end of this, we just see a little bit too much for Nurcio. And he does hold on. More Lings streaming in. Now he has his own Banes coming up. Okay, Nurcio's going to be okay. But Yogo does do good damage here. And just for, you know, to some extent, kind of even up this um, sort of work account as these rocks are going to go down. No doubt about it. As well, that's actually a really good Bailing connection, but he won't be able to get through here anymore. Ooh, that one Zergling getting squashed by the rocks, and a few Lings getting trapped on the outside for Nurture as well. But now he is very, very safe. So, as we see uh, Nurture continue to look around, we see Yogo trying to break his way through these rocks. He's got Lair on the way up. 19 drones to 23. Nurture is taking that opportunity right now to actually drone a little bit further. As this male Ursa Dak looks on and just wonders what all these funny little bug things are running between his feet, running between his legs. As we have the, um, 
Wiggins just moving on through the rocks. And the Queen just going to push away these Zerglings. Oops. What was that? Ooh. Some bailing, some nurture perhaps, and just kind of caught the uh, Zerglings there. Kind of missed it. As we see, the Zerglings is just going to be moving up into the right hand side, and they're going to be uh, going into, working their way through these debris and moving through and towards the main base potentially soon. Nurture having the same idea, both players wanting to move through the rocks to kind of get access to the opponent's side of the map. A fast left from Yogo, probably going to indicate a spire coming up here shortly. We have got a Rotoron on the way down from Nurture, however, so a little bit of a difference between the build orders right now. Spire, Mueller's play against Roaches is going to be what this is. And in the next few moments here, as these Zerglings are going to work through these rocks, and again, both players having Zerglings working through rocks. And just uh, Queen actually coming in to defend it from both players, so a bit of a longer run from Yogo, but he just get over here and he'll start to work his way against this. And well, these Queen's still kind of slow at dealing with these Zerglings, so uh, the Zerglings are actually going to stay on for a couple of moments, realize it's not going to happen. Seven Roaches on the way from Nurture, two more Queens as well, maybe looking to push up the top side of the map. And over towards his opponent's base from this direction. That's Spire on the way down from Yogo as well. I'm looking to see what they can get up to. So that's Spire on the way down. We're going to see these Lings and Queens coming in. Just going to work their way through these rocks at the top. And the Rush is coming in as well. So this attack continuing from uh, Nurture. Looking to hit before his opponent gets ready to go into the Spire play. Whoops, a couple of bands on the rocks. That's not what he wanted to do. Just stop that next one from hitting the rocks. As the rocks do go down, and Nurture, well, can he make this happen? The spire is about to finish, so he has to do damage now. And as Yogo starts up seven middlers, he has to make this happen right now. Otherwise, he's in trouble. A couple of lings already peeling forward, so he's going to get themselves a bane and kill. And a few banes morphing in right now, as here we go. The spine claws on the way up. That's not going to help too much. Queen here trying to help against these uh, bane lings, trying to river down their numbers. Yogo, pretty good split. Only four workers lost so far. Not bad. Spinecrawler helping out a bit too, and then Mutas are about to pop, and Nurture, as these Mutas pop, well, there's Queens coming across as well, five Queens, is that enough? Is that enough against seven Mutas? I think it might be. Oh, he needs something here, he needs to try and hit those Queens with Zerglings, or, I don't know what, I mean, you know, Zerglings, or maybe some Banelings, or anything he can get, but it looks as though Nurture does just have about too much, and this timing for Nurture is just going to kill off Yogo, and Millennium are going to be in a little bit of trouble. As they're going to go free one down, and Nurture is on the verge of all killing Millennium here. And as these mutas just continue to look around, they pick off another, uh, trying to pick up a spore crawler, but uh, it's not going to happen. Nurture has way too much, very well executed, very well fought out, and Yogo is going to lose his natural hatchery. Very cool game, though, very close game, much closer than I thought it was going to be. Uh, point, uh, yeah, uh, Yogo really making a good game out of this. As we're going to see the roaches, the queens, polishing up the ramp. I'm just going to be looking to continue trading here as the spores are burrowed and again, I mean, this is pretty much it for uh, Yogo. He doesn't really have much. He's trying to kite with the middle list, but it's more or less over. GG. Nurture puts Euronics Gaming 3-1 up. And this is the worst possible fast PCs from everyone here. Always nice. Let's go and introduce our players to the bottom right hand side. Looking to win three in a row to put Millennium on top here against Euronics. It's our Blue Cross player. It's Lilbo. So the bomb left from Euronix Gaming, our red Zerg player, is Nurture. How's everyone doing in the chat? Welcome to the stream if you're just joining us here for the SC2 ITL. Hope you're all doing good. Hope you're ready for some a little bit more StarCraft action here still this evening. Once this is done, we will be done for the day after this uh, series. Um, I'm not going to do any ladder stream today, I don't think. Um... Yeah, um, I don't think there's really going to be a ladder soon today. I think I'm going to head off and get some recovering done. I feel like I've cast loads the last couple of days. Um, so I'm just going to get off. And we do have Leifeng tomorrow. We've got more SE to improve Team League tomorrow. We've got WCS on Saturday and Sunday. So I'm going to get off and just prep up a little bit. I set up a load of stuff to go on YouTube and stuff last night. My computer crashed or Windows update happened. So I'm, a bit, I'm even further behind than I should be on that. So... It's been a little bit unfortunate, and Battle.net went down last night, so I couldn't finish off my guide as well, like, nothing wanted me to do anything last night, like, literally, I wasn't meant to do anything last night, it seems, as we see, early on in this game, Lilbo just putting a gateway on the low ground, going to be taking his Nexus, we do just see a hatch gas pool from Nurture to set up within the early stages, something which, of course, 
This probe has been across the map and has scouted for. There's this probe going to be coming up the ramp and again just having a look to see what's going on. Cyber next course coming up to being about halfway done. And the natural expansion is about halfway done here from uh, Lilbo. So natural about halfway done. Zergling speed is starting from nurture and a couple of queens, a couple of lings coming out. Very, um, very slow start to the game here. And this PVZ, man, how many PVZs have we cast today? Like, seriously, we've casted, like, so many PVZs today. It is absolutely insane the number of PVZs we've casted. It's, um, I don't, I don't even know how many it's been. It's been, like, 15 or something, I think. It's been crazy. A couple of things just going to be working their way through. The rocks. It's going to be, um... Working the way through this, and obviously both players just looking to. I mean, if Nature is working down the rocks, he just wants to set up so that he doesn't take any damage here super early in the game. Stargate on the way for Lilbo. Going to be getting some Phoenix or perhaps an Oracle out here early on. We'll see what exactly is going to be very soon. Adept will chase them Zerglings away, so we'll keep these rocks from being popped down for a few more moments. As the Adept just going to be pulling back, and a probe just going to be coming down to the low ground for Lilbo as well. So. Probably just gonna mine away here, that Phoenix on the way up from Lilbo. And we're just gonna see these adepts just working their way through these rocks on the right hand side of the map too. Adept just moving through the bottom side of the map. Rocks get taken down and well, Phoenix just looking to hunt down an overlord too again. Very passive start to this PvZ here on Runes of Endian. You see Lilbo just going to be taking his third nexus as well. So both players just going to be macroing up here in the early stages. Intrigued to see where this goes. Intrigued to see how both these uh, how these players approach this and how they decide to kind of go uh, go forth from this position. As you see these couple of depths in the militia core just working through these rocks and it's going to be taking down this um, rock tower. Pilot on the way. Well, Spores coming in from Nurture, obviously looking to deflect these Phoenix early on, working his way through the rocks on the fourth base, getting ready to set up into a fourth before too, you know, before too much time has passed. So, setting up into this fourth base nice and quickly already. Nothing really strange about that either. I mean, just very standard stuff here, realistically. Just um, very standard stuff all around. So, so yeah. Um, a few Phoenix is going to be pushed away by the Queens. So a few Phoenix being pushed away by the Queens, and again, just such a passive game. Sorry, this is not a very interesting start. I've casted so many PvZs today, I'm just kind of like done with this matchup, you know? I'm just like done. Like, you guys know I hate the startup of PvZ. It feels so slow and nothing happens. And this is going to be more so than ever here on Runes of Endian. Did you see a couple of Robos coming down? Obviously the plan from uh, Lilbo are going to be to try and get into a whole bunch of Immortals in the near future. And go into towards kind of just Immortal, Zalia, Tavarkon. Very standard composition setup for him. As these Phoenix just going to be coming over towards the third base and just going to lift up a couple of these uh, drones, perhaps, um, potentially. Just get a, a couple of these and get some damage done, but he doesn't quite find it. So, so far, the Phoenix doing very little damage. Four workers kill, or four somethings kill, what was it? Two of Lords, a Ling, and a drone. Really not a lot killed early on by these Phoenix, so. Not being the best of sorts in terms of Phoenix openings, as you're going to see Lilbo trying to boost a couple of these Immortals. Forge is on the way up as well from Lilbo right now. And you're going to see these couple of Adepts, this Mothership Core, is moving on down towards his left hand side. A couple more drones going down here. As war Phoenix is so unlucky. I mean, he kept. I mean, okay, he's lucky to get out, but he keeps on getting hit on. Like, all of these other Phoenix have barely been attacked. This one Phoenix here gets targeted every single time. Poor guy. Uh, then again, he is leading the charge while low on health, so. To be fair, he's kind of got to expect it in some regards. As uh, Nurture going to pull his queens back over here once again. And plenty of queens just going to be kind of the hit squad to kind of deal with these Phoenix right now. So, continue to deal with those. Plus one missile attack starts up from Nurture. Hydrogen is going to be finishing very shortly as well. Queen's just continuing to um, set up some crypt tumors and just going to be um, 
seeing Link's just working away through these rocks, so Link's just working away through these rocks and Queen's just gonna be kind of continuing to take down the Phoenix. Hydra's continuing to come up here from Nurture. We already see that muscular augments on the way, so looking to be very similar to what he did against Showtime, if you guys remember back a few games ago. Lots of Hydra's initially and wow, that's a lot of gates being added on. Going up to 11 gateways here for Lilbo. Lots of gateways here for Lilbo as these couple of and well, it's just going to be working their way through these rocks in the fourth base, and the Phoenix is just going to be taking uh, down that Overseer as well. Twilight Council gets popped down as well. So Lilbo just going to be looking for his charge upgrade here. Probably his plus two starting soon as well, as he's still adding on these Immortals. And again, with the fourth Nexus ready to take, he's going to be... Um, going to be interesting. We're going to see the Phoenix coming in. Just going to pass, lift a queen, but... Plenty of Hydras here, and actually, whoa, that unlucky Phoenix has actually finally been taken down. First of the 5-4, to four, no real surprise on that, as he pulls back a little bit here. And look at Dan, halfway done. Three more overwards on the way in with drops, so that's going to be intriguing. wonder what he's actually going to drop, and where he's going to drop, if he just drops into the base of Lilbo, or what exactly has planned. Lilbo set up a nice timing right now where... Well, basically, he's going to be able to attack in perhaps just before the Lurkers come out. A couple of sentries going to be using very nice force fields here to trap a couple of Queens and a couple of Hydras. This is actually um, very weird. No charge, right? Yeah, no charge, no plus two. The Lobo's kind of just not even used his Twilight Council yet. He's just kind of uh, built it and then never used it. Maybe as a way to transition afterwards as he continues to push down this side. So many sentries, just a mortal stalk of sentry with a few Phoenix to help out. Time up going to come down on a few hydras in the back. Mothership core will fall. As Nurture is well under a little bit of trouble here. Lilbo continue to push on through. Hydras continue to be force field and this little bit of a timing coming in right now from Lilbo is getting a lot of damage done and well Millennium aren't dead just yet. Lilbo is looking to keep them alive as he pushes through, takes down the fourth base. These hydras are going to be pushed back. And a very aggressive timing from Lilbo, way more aggressive than I thought was going to happen. Twilight Council coming down and all of that, you know, you're expecting charge, plus two, but instead he just attacks, sees an opportunity, and he takes it. Lots of Zerglings coming out now, these spores not really going to add too much to this composition. A few more Hydras on the way, I mean, Lilbo at the same time might just be content with what he's done already. Might just kind of pull back towards the fourth base of his own, towards his charge now, and his plus two starting up. And just kind of uh, leave it from there. Do you see what prism here to reinforce with if he wants it? At the same time, you could also just kind of fire some units up into the main base and get some damage done over there as, well, Nurture can be kind of denied a fourth currently, which is frustrating as we're going to see him opening up these rocks and setting up a counterattack over to the right-hand side. Phoenix do spot those Zerglings though, so doesn't know what's going on. There's a few Zealots in that will piss him ready to go in towards the main of Nurture here in the next few moments. As Nurture just going to be moving out onto the map. Just going to be moving out onto the map and just going to be... Um, Seeing these things moving up to the top of the slide. And the Azal is going to be dropping down and just trying to trade with this Queen. So, so that's trying to trade with this Queen. The, uh, he's going to just fight against these um, Zerglings. I'm just going to be um, cleaning up rather easily. Not really much of an issue. Hydra's over here. They're going to attack into the third and Lilbo. Well, he is beginning to respond. That Temple Archives is very out of position. And that Temple Archives is probably going to go down very, very quickly here. As Lilbo comes in, he does not save it. Very close to saving it, but it's not quite there in the end. Hallucinated Phoenix gets taken down. These real Phoenix still around, not really doing too much more just yet. And as Lobo, his bank is building on up here. Charge plus two about to finish. His Temple Archives is rebuilding. Getting ready to go into those Archons. His fourth base will finish before Nurture's. As now we're going to see, well, there's always the possibility for Nurture to kind of fall back from the top side of the map and then rotate through the bottom side over to this side of the map once again. So lots of different possibilities here for Nurture to keep on being aggressive himself. He's found a way back up to being close to maxed out, but I'm not too sure how good his composition really is against this Protoss army, which keeps getting better and better. As Lobo will be coming forward here, he will very quickly find these Lurkers, Hydras, and Lings up there. And I don't know if you can fight this just yet. There's a lot of sentries which are not going to add a lot to this composition at all. We do see Zealots warping in from the Warp Prism over towards the main, and this is a lot of Zealots, and Nurture going to have to pull back completely to deal with this, because it's a big commitment from Lobo. So many Zealots, and he's going to take down 10 drones, 12 drones, and wow, he's going to get a couple of Hydras as well. So that Warp Prism stays alive a little while longer. At the same time, now we're going to see this starting to push forwards here at the front. We're going to see, well, a few Hydras, and actually a couple of Lurkers going to be dropping into the main. We saw them overlords being kind of created before, never really got to see what they were for, now we do. As we're going to see them dropping into the main base. That's going to be annoying at the same time, though. Nurture, Lobo, still trying to fight down here. Nurture taking some heavy losses in the main base. He's still not cleaning up this warp prism. He's still not able to clean this up at all. 
And we're gonna see the Zealots just overrunning in the main. At the same time, Hydra's and Nurkis in the main base of Lilbo doing a bit of damage, but not enough. And Nurturo taps out. Lilbo takes game number six. The side of Ulrena is our red Protoss player. <laughs> it is Millennium's Lilbo. <laughs> to the top left, it's gonna be our blue Terran player. It is from Euronix Gaming, the Muslim. As we set up into this, see what's going to be happening here. In the very early stages of this TVP on Arena, you're going to see already a uh, depot being placed as part of the wall to stop any early units coming across to scout or just delay in scouts. You're going to see the barracks coming up here as well. We could maybe see multiple barracks opening and just kind of go for a big kind of, kind of multiple marine, lots of marines pushing across the map very early. There's a the second rocks coming down. Let's see how this is going to go. As we see the second Rax here, and we're going to see the third Rax coming down too. The Muslim is going to three Rax or four Rax or something all in against Lilbo. And Lilbo just doesn't really have an idea it's going to be happening. He is going to go double gas to start off with. And kind of a defensive double gas too. It's not like free. It's kind of like not an aggressive in a lot of ways. It's like. Hey, I'm going to go double gas and just going to have two, three workers in right now. He's just going to slowly rally into it. So kind of mineral heavy double gas play. He needs to go for fast cyber core, fast tech, maybe some fast units too to help himself out here. He hasn't even tried to scout her here early on as the Muslim. Starting to move across the map with his first SCV to see what's happening. First Marines are starting up. And again, I mean, the idea is, how many do you make? Like, probably like six, eight. Then you go across the map and see what you can do. That's Lilbo, he's up on all workers and gas now. We're going to see him moving down to low ground to expand here in just a couple of moments. That's if he's coming across, but is he going to be punished for his lack of scouting? That mothership core is going to be coming out, and of course going to be an important part of this defense, but if pylons aren't in the right places, then this attack could go very, very well for the Muslim. And as we see, that's if he's going to go back home. He sees the expansion coming down from his opponent, and we see a stalker on the way up. Gonna be rallied across the map, so to be fair, he is gonna find these marines coming across the map rather early, which is good for him. Mothership Core's going out across the map too, well that's not good. That's not good at all. And we're gonna see this uh, stalker coming back in, gonna find that um, SCV. Lilbo has to pay attention to this, he's the SCV, he's in a second gonna see the marines. There he does, he sees it, he sees the SCVs too, and now Lilbo knows exactly what's going on. Cancel the Nexus, pylons on the high ground, cancels the Stargate or whatever that was. Couple more gates coming up, he's gonna put the pylons on that high ground, and. Well, here we go, these SCVs, the Marines are coming across, the Mothership Corps is coming back home as well, of course. As we all see these Marines and SCVs coming up this ramp, and Lobo probably going to have to pull something into this as well. Nice for an overcharge to begin with here, actually. He's going to pull some, um, well, I like this, pulling his probes, ready to pull his probes in as well, if necessary, you know. This uh, Wolf Gate going to get another Stalker out, one of the pounds at the front going down. Mothership Corps has energy in 10, 10 more energy. Until another phone overcharge is available, but to be fair, these Stalkers are feeling a lot of damage. A lot of these Marines already going down. Now continue to cut away against these SCVs, probe's going to be pulled as well. The Muslim is going to be able to use the choke points very well, very effectively. The another phone overcharge now available. Where does Lilbo drop it on this pylon here? Yes, he does, and that's going to be a couple of Marines going down because of that. And it looks as though Lilbo might be able to just micro his way out of this situation. The Marines continue to drop now a third Stalker as well. It looks as though it'll be enough for Lilbo. The membership core will not fall. The SCVs go down. This is a hold, and this is Lilbo taking game number six and forcing us into a game number seven an ace match here to let's go introduce our players in vertical spawns here on invader to the bottom left hand side from millennium it's our blue protoss player let's hear it if you're cheering on lobo to the top left it's our green zerg from Euronix gaming it's hanfi what's up magical gs what's up how are you doing I'm doing very well, Karen. Thank you for asking. As he's set up, ready to go into this. Again, guys, thank you for joining us here for the sc 2 itl If you did just join us after watching the ASL qualifiers, then make sure you do check out the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash sc 2 improve if you want to catch up with any of the games you may have missed today. All of the sc 2 improve Team League matches go on YouTube, and all of the best matches from the other cups that we cast go up on YouTube as well. So do check that out. Hit the subscribe button over there, see when we go live with videos. Guide video has been a little bit delayed because of some issues the last couple of nights. 
I'll be up over the weekend. And we'll also have another video of my Kova, Nova, uh, Kova? Nova COVID Ops playthrough going up very shortly as well. Again, really pushing the YouTube channel lately, so it's a great time to start subbing on there if you do enjoy your YouTube content. As this drone just having a little bit of a dance around with this probe, trying to take this hatchery. If it does get it down, a little bit, just being a little bit annoying. As we're going to see, these vertical spawns again do lend themselves to aggression from the very early stages of the game. Now again, Invader has been changed. It doesn't really affect the kind of horizontal, uh, vertical spawns too much. This third base, there's only uh, there's no kind of pathway into it from the back anymore. Basically, kind of over here is what's changed. These kind of pathways used to be bridges over to the third. Um, this bridge here, basically, used to be part of the game, and now it isn't. So that did change up a little bit. As we see the natural hatchery coming down from Hanfi, and that Zergman speed starting up as well. So it was gas, it was pool gas, and then a hatchery, obviously, because you had to uh, deal with the early sort of um, annoyance from Little Bo's probe blocking his nexus. And that is a little bit frustrating for him. As we're going to see this hatchery coming in. Third hatch from Hanfi. Nothing too surprising just yet then from either player. No real ideas of how this game is going to be looking. I guess we'll be looking towards the Protoss player now to see what sort of tech is going to be coming up first from him. We've seen a lot of Stargates in the last few games. Maybe something like that once again now from Lobo. If a pro player goes for an all-in with no backup plan, it must really mean he thinks he's not good enough to play normally, right? Not really. It just means that he's mean. It just means that they think it's got a better chance of winning than the macro game, or thinks it's got a strong strategy on the map. I mean, maybe they've played on ladder recently and they've always played macro, so now he's going to change it up. There's a lot of reasons to do an all-in. Um, it's not just because it's a fast, easy way to win necessarily. It's. Um, I mean, in a lot of ways it is, but in a lot of ways there's a lot of reasons why you could choose to all in over, over other things. As we do see, a couple of gates on the way down from Lilbo, a couple of stargates being added on as well. As we do see, the single Zerglin is being chasing after this uh, depth here. Dead with a single kill on it and will not get a drone kill here in the natural. will go down. So the double stargate after these two gateways means that Lilbo obviously looking to commit heavily into the Phoenix here, into the mid game and further on through this game. The Phoenix, with this sort of commitment, is generally going to be a very sort of, you know, lots of harassment, lots of damage being done, and looking to kind of pick off overlords as Hydra start to come out, pick out a couple of them as they kind of transfer between bases. It's a really powerful way to play, and there's a couple of different ways you can play the mid game out too. You can go for kind of a lot of adepts and try and trade with kind of uh, Phoenix adepts a lot. You can also kind of go for a bit of a different uh, kind of playstyle, which is to go for a kind of, just, well, the standard playstyle, which is to add on a double robo behind this and go in towards, say, you know, to go in towards the very standard, like, immortal setup afterwards. Now, what we're going to see here from Hanfi is Numatize Carapace finishing and melee upgrades on the way, so maybe some drop base play from him, but for the most part, probably looking to be kind of Ling Bane early on, and then maybe once he gets his lair up, a switch into Ling Bane Hydra. Or something along those lines. Now we did see Lilbo in game 7 against Vortex when he played against Liquid. He um, did hold off a Ling Bane, uh, kind of a Bane Hydra timing on this map. It was cross spawns, so a bit harder, it's a bit easier to do than on vertical spawns. But definitely doable for him here. If that is going to be the plan out of Hanfi, as we're going to see this Phoenix just coming across, having a look to see what's going on. That's this. Well, Phoenix just doing a bit of damage here, a bit of damage there. Of course, with four Phoenix, they can come in and really commit onto an Overlord or so. As, ooh, that Overlord gets away. Two hit points, maybe even one hit point before it started regenerating. So, um, Overlord does just get away there. But, I mean, you can commit with more Phoenix like this. The, you know, the way they stack up so quickly, you can kind of sit in Queen damage a little while, lose some of the shields because they'll regen. Maybe lose a little bit of health because the likelihood of being targeted down is very low, as we'll see him coming back in. Just looking to see what you can kill off. That Overlord's still there. The Queen squad... Moving around too. As we can see, one of these queens picked up, and again, I mean, that's the sort of thing we're talking about. Queen gets found between bases and gets picked off just almost immediately. All the overlords here now taking some damage too. This has not been a plus one upgrade though from Lobo. Oftentimes, you do see that plus one air upgrade coming in. Not the case this time around, as the Phoenix just picking off more overlords, getting a bit more damage done around the place. So, Zerglin is looking to try and deny the third. That's not going to happen, unfortunately. So, third base being kept alive as we see the Phoenix just pulling back and more lings sitting up over here, plus one melee, about to finish up from Hanfi, a bunch of Banelings on the way down. A couple of Robos being added on as well for Lilbo, and that Forge 
coming in for him to just continue to set up into the next stage of his game for himself. As we'll see. Do we see a lair yet? No, no lair. So it's a very late lair out of Hanfi. As these transfusers coming down, and I mean, <laughs> Lilbo just sitting in this, doesn't kill the queen, loses a phoenix. Does waste a lot of, or kind of forces a lot of um, transfusers to be used though, which is nice. As you see these queens starting to push across the map. Here we go, Queen Ling Bane. That's what it's going to be. A few sentries already out to try and help protect, and a couple of storms have been walked in, but the gates aren't finished. Oh, sorry, they're robots. Actually, doesn't have fast warpings on this pylon. It needs to warp in a little bit closer. And as we're going to see the Phoenix. Well, the Phoenix, if they could lift up them Banelands, would be fantastic. We're going to see the Banelands starting to move forwards now, and a nice couple of force fields really minimizing the damage there. Only one adept, one zealot lost to that. And as we see, 26 more Lings being made. A couple of mortals on the way out, which will help a lot against these Queens. And then Phoenix still around. I have a few of them going down. Actually, only one, so you kind of just didn't make as many as I thought. But if you can pick off kind of a high energy queen at the back, that's the sort of thing that will be nice. He actually finds one still moving across the map here. And then he's going to start trying to break the front. But it's a good wall off from uh, Lilbo. He comes down this ramp, and Phoenix is going to be lifting up those queens. Membership core drops the forward overcharge just before it falls on the third base. For him to fall back into. Another force field comes down. Hanfi is starting to make his way through this with these. Um, Bailings, but Bailing numbers are very thin, and these Immortals out now. It's just really the Queen's left over. Immortals are going to start making their way down this to help. And these few Zealots and these uh, Phoenix that are left over should be enough, I think, to clean up, actually. And I think this is actually going to be a little bit making a defense here. Uh, we do see the Immortal turn around to fight his hands. It's not the most effective unit to fight Lings, but it's going to be enough. And Lobo holds on. It looks as though Millennium were looking very, very, very troubled at the start of this series, or, well, midway through this series. Three games to one down. But now. It looks for Millennium as though they're going to make it a victory. And that was something which wasn't looking too hopeful for them a while ago. And big victory for them because, again, it means they may be able to finish top of this group. But, again, maybe not. It depends on the map scores of uh, Liquid's matches and their final map score as well. Millennium after this will be plus 17 map score. Liquid or plus 16 with two matches to play. Of course, Mil Liquid do have to win both those matches. But they also have to play against Azimba and Easy Visualize, whereas Millennium have to play against True Esports, who are very likely to take a couple of maps at least off Millennium as well. So it's going to be interesting as we see these Phoenix continue to move around here. We're going to see these uh, models continue to pop out on the third. And I mean, Lobo's got an advantage. He's just waiting to see when exactly he can fight. And I mean, he's looking around. He sees the kind of a low fourth. He sees lots of units. And I mean, to be fair, Hanfi is probably just going to attack into Lobo once again. So that's what Lobo is more or less waiting for here. Just waiting for that to happen, and then he'll just defend, and then maybe counter-attack, rather than just attacking into this position. I mean, to be fair, Banelands, etc. are very hard to attack into, very easy to slip up. As these things continue to move around, a few more Lings coming in. I'm just going to be joining up with a few Banelands, a couple of dropping overlords setting up. I'm actually going to see some drops into the main base, perhaps. Yes, yeah, something which Lobo has not really been... Very, uh, doing very much to deny throughout the game, although maybe if these Phoenix come back in time, they can get rid of those overlords very easily. But I don't think they're going to do that. I mean, why would he all of a sudden now go to the right-hand side of his main base? And as, as he moves out here, I mean, it's actually going to be a very good time. Oh, is he really? These Phoenix are on the way. I don't believe it. That's literally incredible. Literally, the first time we've really seen Happy try and drop in this game, the Phoenix are going to come down. They're actually going to find what's going on over here. I guess, in a way, it's kind of the one way Hanfi could find a way back into this game, but goodbye, Zerglings. Goodbye, Banelands morphing in, too. These Phoenix making very quick work of these, so... Lots of Banes going down, as we see at the same time, a few Lings catching a gold base, trying to be taken. A couple more Banes morphing in, going to get cleaned out, too. And we're going to see, well... This Immortal Army from Lilbo is going to be way too good, truly. Membership Core goes down here. Here comes the Banelands. There's a couple of Overlords here, and obviously the Phoenix is going to start working their way through those, and... They're probably just going to fall, right? I mean, well, Transfusers keep them alive, but Transfusers on Overlords means less Transfusers on the ground, and I mean, that means the Queens fall a little bit faster as well, of course. And as we'll see, Lobo just continuing to play defensively as this attack continues to come in towards this front door. These Lings, these Banes, these Queens, we're going to see what's up. Zelt's just going to be cleaning out a few more Zerglings over here. And as the Phoenix moving up, and they're going to be taken down. A couple more of these Overlords. Transfusers coming in once again. The Overlords, the Banes are going to start dropping in on top of this army. Just keeping the Overlords alive. So the Bayons do drop, but the barriers get used. And I mean, now there's just so much. And Lilbo is going to force the GG. Millennium! Come back from the brink of defeat. Nurture was on the verge of an all kill.